Okay. Back up, back up, back up. So, like many of you, I haven't been doing a fantastic job of keeping my data. I documented it here on my blog, and basically the short version is, I stuff that I like to share, I, I upload it to a, a bucket, s.natalian.org, and I share it like that. Otherwise, I have a free NAS back over there, and I back up all the photos that I typically don't share on the internet and the videos, all the sort of like stuff that doesn't make it up there. I, I just dump it on my free NAS. So my free NAS has, uh, and, and it's red Samba share, that's where I put stuff. Uh, oh my gosh, can you read that? I think it's just easier if I just SHH in and go DFH. So red Samba here, there's about three terabytes that have historically not been backed up. And I did try a couple of things. Um, I think B2, but it was just too slow. I investigated Digital Ocean, I think. Ultimately, it seemed the best way to back up was using AWS. And I did some back of the napkin calculations and I thought this shouldn't be so bad. And I think it's manageable. The thing that really caught me off guard was like, the, the, there was like a big spike and I looked at the charges and it was basically Glacier requests. So, oh my gosh, where do I begin? So my S3 bucket has a life cycle. I have got it transitioning to Glacier. So that should save the, the, um, the most money for, for, for archival and backup. And yeah, you, as you can see here, my, my, everything's backed up in here. Okay, but there are problems, like a dot recycle directory came up there, I wish you could ignore that, you can't. So if I go here into cloud tasks, or something like that, you can see that there isn't much granularity here. And you can't ignore, say, the dot recycle directory. So there's a few gigs in there that I have to somehow pull out. And also, there's sometimes like these weird failures. Um, I have no idea why. Like for example, since the files that are synced up to S3 turn into Glacier, sometimes for one bizarre reason or another, it, uh, now I get failures that it wants to set the modification type operation is not valid on the source object source files. So, so basically what, it, what it's saying is that once, once it got into Glacier, it's trying to update the modification time. I have no idea why. I mean, I don't think I've up, I've used this directory. I might have up, um, accessed it with um, with Final Cut Pro 10, and I guess yeah. Now the modification time has changed locally on my FreeNAS, and now it's having difficulty syncing it up <clears throat> to Glacier. I thought what would happen was that since I use, I have. Uh, versioning on that if something like this, like a modification happened locally and then it got synced up, then there'd be two versions, but evidently not. But anyway, it's interesting to see the files that modify. Like typically I keep everything in this year, month, day and things actually shouldn't modify. Anyway, going back to pricing this whole damn thing out, I think it's a manageable cost. There are some, yeah, there's some things that sort of if you don't have tags on your buckets, you should use tags like crazy with AWS. The only real way of figuring out how much a particular bucket is costing you is go to AWS usage report and choose S3 and then you get this big sort of XLS thing and then you have to go in there and, and start um, working out which one is taking out the most bandwidth or something like that, which kind of sucks. I kind of hoped the um, the cost explorer could do it, but I don't really get the, the visibility with cost explorer until I'm start, I'm start using tags. And so yes, there was a big jump. And 
when I looked, drilled into that cost, it was mainly Glacier requests. So when it did that initial three terabyte upload, that's when the bulk of my costs happening. And my S3 costs up have gone up otherwise. And I'm trying to get a grip of the, those sort of like extra daily costs. But yeah, any tips guys, do let me know. But anyway, I mean, now I have my FreeNAS, my local storage all backed up now. I've got this sort of warm fuzzy feeling. I don't want to pay 50 bucks a month for this privilege, but it's fast and I know S3 is very reliable. So I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with it for now. I'm rolling with it. Um, I'm going to share how I sync things up from my, my MacBook over here. And um, if, if you have any questions about my data setup, please let me know. I'm always keen to get feedback and improve the current situation, which is not great. But now I have a remote backup. So thanks AWS, but 50 bucks a month uh, and a, a billing manager that's really hard to figure out things. Uh, that's yeah. Please like the video. Please subscribe for more. And um, yeah, I hope tell me about your backup solutions, guys. Bye now.